Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this Westinghouse WGen 9500 DF. Customer brought it in, said that he checked the battery, the battery's fully charged, he's got fresh fuel in it, but the thing won't start. I'm gonna show you the number one issue I see with this besides a carburetor or a fuel related issue on these types of generators. Very common, I see it probably 30 or 40 times a year and it's a super simple, quick and easy fix. I'll also show you the rest of the electrical and kind of how to test that out and see exactly what you have going on. If you have a similar issue on your WGN 9500 or any other electric start generator for that matter. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as we go along if you enjoy the content. When you're trying to start any of these generators, the first thing you'll do is turn the battery switch to on. You should get a light down here. And that means that the whole system here is getting DC voltage from the battery. Now we'll hit the start button and now it should start to turn over. All I'm getting is flashing out of the green light. That is not what should be happening. It should be trying to start now. Although it is flashing, it is doing nothing. I hear no noises or anything else coming from anywhere on this generator. Doesn't matter what I do, nothing changes. Many times when I see this, I will actually see that the button itself is not lighting up whatsoever, even though we're getting a battery indicator light down here. It's all gonna be one of these very few things that'll cause this type of issue. The first thing I like to do in an instance like this is check the battery connections. Make sure that they're tight, both the positive and negative on the battery itself which they are. You can also check the connection here, make sure it's secure, and then follow your positive wire on up to the solenoid. Make sure that's all tight. If it's loose at all, you won't get good voltage through. Everything's good. You can also test the ground wire where it attaches to the engine. Everything's secure there. So this electrical system should be perfectly good, right? Guy says he charged the battery. Well, what does the voltage actually read? Six point four five volts is not enough voltage to get this thing started. This will never start with that kind of voltage. I've seen uh, people try to get them started even with the pull start with that kind of low voltage or below, and the fuel solenoid actually will not kick in enough in order to start this thing. So the fuel solenoid will not retract and allow fuel in on this carburetor with that low a voltage, even if your generator. You know, you're not trying to use the electric start on it. Your battery still needs to be charged enough to engage that fuel solenoid. Usually that's in between seven and eight volts is what you're gonna need. And what that fuel solenoid that sits on the bottom of the carburetor is gonna do, this one's a little different. Uh, the one on this has two wires coming out and it actually has a rubber needle to it instead of a design like this, but same concept. As soon as it gets voltage, this pulls down and allows the Carburetor to get fuel allows the entire engine to get fuel up through the main jet as soon as it Loses voltage it springs back up and it blocks off that jet so you can't get any fuel So regardless if you try to pull start this It's never going to start because or it's going to start and then die out pretty much instantly I see that happen occasionally too because it can't not get enough fuel if it gets a little bit of fuel It's not going to be enough to keep it running we're gonna charge this battery up here for a little bit, see if we can't get it back to where it needs to be, see if it'll hold a charge. I gave it about a 20 minute or so charge. Let's see what it says now. Now I put it on 40 amps for 20 minutes. We're at 12.85 volts as opposed to 6.45. Pretty big increase. Let's see up top here battery switch on. Now, if you hit this start switch and you don't get anything out of it, you'll want to check the fuse. I'll show you where that is here momentarily. Uh, as long as all the connections are, are good and your battery is charged, definitely want to check that with a meter because just because your battery charger says that it charged does not mean that it actually is. I see that all the time also, where people will put their battery charger on it. It'll show green 
well, hey, it was up to 12 volts at one point. As soon as you take that off, well, it drops back down to six. Uh, it really just depends. He said he charged it. Who knows exactly what happened there? It seems to be holding a charge now. Will it work if we hit the button? Imagine that, fires right up. It's amazing what'll happen when you have good voltage coming to the starter and to the solenoid. It'll fire right up. I also see a lot of times with this, again, if that doesn't light up, our fuse, which actually sits right here, can be blown. We'll pull this down. On some models, you have a little bit different of a design. This one here is just a little blade type fuse and we know it's good. You can see the middle, it should have that full U. If any of that's broken, then that's gonna tell you that that fuse is bad, obviously. Some of them are like a blade type or a cartridge type fuse where they sit right in line. But if you look here, it is the red wire that comes right off the solenoid, not the one that goes to the battery, but the other one is where that fuse is always gonna be is on that wire on any generator. That's where they're gonna put the fuse for the starter. That fuse is good. And if you're still not getting voltage up to your start switch, or it's not turning green, even though you have the battery switch on, all you have to do is check the voltage going into the back of it. Now it's not real easy to take all this apart and to get to it. I do see these switches go bad a lot though. That's one of the most common things I see go wrong with these. If everything here check, checks good, your battery is definitely good, your battery indicator is on, but yet your start switch will still not light up, chances are you've got a bad start switch. If everything else checks out, you've got a good indicator and your light's flashing green, go ahead and check the two wires coming to the solenoid. Those should be getting whatever the battery voltage is when you're trying to turn it over. You can put your probes in the back and hit the button, and when it goes, you should be getting good voltage. See, it's showing the battery voltage, or just a little bit below, 12.70. And it's gonna keep cycling on that, it's gonna turn off and then try again. That means everything here's working. If you're getting that good voltage, and your solenoid is not turning over, or it's not engaging the starter, then you know you have an issue with either the solenoid or the starter. You can test the starter very easily by shorting out your two terminals here. If you take the boots off, you wanna be very careful not to touch anything back to ground. But if you short these two across, you should, the starter should turn over if you're getting good voltage from the battery. Very easy test there. That tells you instantly your starter is good. Now that's just such a super easy fix, it's almost silly, isn't it? On these, you've gotta remember though that when they don't get a lot of use, that battery is just gonna go dead from sitting. You know, you only use it once or twice a year. Make sure to charge up that battery. A lot of these do not actually have a stator on them that charges the battery as it's running either. So just starting it and running it for 30 minutes once a month, uh, like you may do to keep the carb cleaned or to keep it maintenance and check everything out, does not mean that that battery is gonna be serviced at the same time. Many times it's gonna need a separate charge just to keep it uh, good. That, or you can put it on a maintainer. It's got that quick connect on this one that I do like. Uh, again, we've seen a lot of issues with those start buttons. So if you've checked everything out, uh, you can test the voltage getting to the start button, but that's chances are that's what your issue is gonna be. They just, they seem to pull quite a bit of high amperage through them uh, for sending that voltage to the solenoid and seem to burn out pretty quick. That or any kind of fluctuations, bad grounds and things like that can also cause it. But uh, it's a very simple electrical system on this for the starting system. I've kind of went through that all in just a couple minutes here. Hopefully this has helped somebody out if you're having an issue with your generator starting. And remember, check that battery first because there's a very good likelihood if you've just relied on your battery charger to tell you if it's good or not, that could be the only issue you have. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content.